What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel here at Tice Reptiles. Today I'm going to go over some things I do for cleaning, some of the methods I use, um, some things I've made that help helps the job uh, get done a lot quicker, and also um, you know the, the hygiene that I do in between um, tubs and, and things that I've learned from other keepers to help uh, lighten the risk of it. if something does pop up hopefully not spreading it to another another boa or a python in the collection or, or anything like that so basically um husbandry tips and how you can limit the risk um, with having a decent sized collection of uh, boas so uh, thanks for checking out the channel let's get started first off uh, please excuse the mess it you know it gets this way every week uh, during the week we are extremely busy so I'm kind of in and out of this room spot cleaning uh, just making sure you know the animals are good to go um, so I really don't worry about the aspen falling on the floor and stuff like that uh, just making sure the animals are good but the first thing we have here is a really dirty bucket and that's where I dump all the old water I dump the old water into that bucket and then from there uh, I make sure the deli cups are, are clean enough. Um, I'll reuse them sometimes for two or three weeks. Um, they usually don't build up too much. Um, but if I see them starting to get dirty, I toss them out. And right here's another five gallon bucket. It's a Home Depot bucket. And what I did here is I just drilled a hole in here and I put this spout. Um, so I was using smaller, like two gallon or gallon jugs. Um, and this just seems to work a lot better for me. Um, so yeah, so I'll dump out the water and then right here, um, just fill it. And I make sure that I'm using a hand to, to use, when I use this, I'm make, making sure I'm using the hand that I did not touch the bowl with. Um, and that's important to not cross contaminate anything. If something were to pop up in the collection, um, you want all your surfaces that you normally touch to be sanitized. Um, and then in between each tub, I, I make sure I use hand sanitizer or gloves. Uh, for me, hand sanitizer seems to work better because the gloves kind of get stuck on my hands. It's just real time consuming. Um, so sanitizer, which I have some over here. Again, guys, it's pretty messy up here. I have the deli cups that I use as well as the uh, chlorhexidine solution um, that I use for disinfecting, disinfecting, um, which I've mentioned that in another video. Um, over here, I've got my plant area that I'm trying to um, expand on. I think it's pretty cool for the time being. Uh, eventually, this possibly this whole space will be used um, for more caging. So we'll just see how the future kind of unfolds. Um, yeah, let's get into some more topics about cleaning um, and then later on we'll be feeding. So, so another important uh, piece of information I want to share with you guys. So these two right here are litter mates um, from 2020 that were born here. Um, with litter mates, I will not worry too much about cross contamination. Um, especially uh, at this point, they've never been introduced to other boas or anything like that. Later on down the road, once they start getting paired paired up with other boas and things like that, then I'll start um, focusing more on that cross contamination between the siblings. But as of now, I don't worry too much um, with the litters. I will. You know, I can separate the litters and get their waters changed out really quick. So, just take the bowl out, dump it out. The bowl's still fairly clean, so I can reuse it. Second one. Uh, and that makes my my job pretty easy, uh, pretty quick. So then I'll just take the sanitizer like that, it's pretty easy. So I think a lot of people can just incorporate at least that 
um, into their husbandry and risk spreading anything. I know there's major concern about you know IBD and people are so worried about IBD and things like that but if you just practice good husbandry whether you're keeping colubrids, um, ball pythons, boas, um, any kind of snakes or, or lizards for that matter you just practice good husbandry and, and you shouldn't really have too much to worry about so let's jump into the next topic the uh, next thing I want to talk about is having boas die um, for no apparent reason or out of the blue or due to breeding season and things like that um, if you're looking at getting into this as as a breeding as a breeding hobby or potentially uh, growing it into a business later on down the road um, you're gonna have to prepare yourself for losing uh, boas because it, it will happen this is this is only our third breeding season over here and we have lost boas um, and I'm sure any other breeder that you talk to that would be willing to share that information will let you know that they have lost boas as well um, it, it really sucks it's not easier um, anytime but I think that the positives of keeping these reptiles and breeding these reptiles definitely outweighs the, the negatives. Um, so th the reason I'm showing this guy right here, this one of my holdbacks from 2020, this is a pastel dream, monster tail, possible super hypo arabesque, 100% um, head for call albino. Um, and this, so he was born um, last year in 2020. And this year, in 2021, his dad um, passed away. Uh, his dad was a pastel dream monster tail hypo arabesque. He was a 2017 animal, so he would have been coming up on four years old. And, uh, and during the breeding season, he he looked really good. He was doing doing really good, and we actually have a female that's gravid from him right now. Um, and sadly enough, I, I put him in with a, another female and uh, I think just stretched him too thin, you know, and, and he burned, burned himself out and, uh, and wouldn't eat a few tries. I tried feeding him and then he finally did take a meal down um, and then he regurgitated that meal and shortly after passed away. So that's something, and I raised that guy from a little baby, you know, so that's something that you gotta prepare yourself for um, in this hobby. Um, but I do have this guy to kind of carry on that, those genetics um, and to, you know, I have one of, uh, have another uh, sibling, three other siblings uh, from this litter that I held on to. So yeah, just, just, you know, get ready for that. Cause it's going to happen. You know, it's, it's nobody's fault. It's, you know, if anything, this one was my fault and I should have known better rather than to put him with another female when he was already breeding um, pretty consistently for a couple months, you know, um, so possibly I could have prevented that. But I've also lost a couple boas um, for no apparent reason out of the blue, otherwise appear very, very healthy. Um, and I think that just has something to do with them not digesting a meal properly. Uh, boas can have a very sensitive stomach, so, you know, you got to be really, really mindful. And, and like Brad Sherman says, you know, pay attention to the stool, pay attention to the color, the consistency. Um, so if there's any issue that may be coming up, you can try and catch it and uh, prevent um, losing that boa. Uh, but some, sometimes you can't prevent it. So, yeah, I mean, uh, no matter what species you're looking into getting into, this is gonna be something that you're gonna have to think about because uh, you, you could raise something from a baby to adulthood and then lose it, you know, so it, it really sucks. But, uh, but I guarantee you that when you see that healthy litter born or when, when things do go right, you know, it makes it well worth it. So I just figured I would kind of share some of the heartache with you guys that, that can't happen in this hobby. But here's this dude again, really, really cool. And you can see the speckling on his head. That, that's from the arabesque gene.
we'll go ahead and take this video out um, showing you guys one of the breeder male paradise um, brothers that I have I'm trying to take the camera so this is the dirtier looking he's kind of got more dirtiness going on in his pattern and the other male is much cleaner um, so for that reason I put this male with the hypo Aztec female um, since Aztec can be kind of a crazier, dirtier looking uh, pattern anyway, so I uh, figured we would kind of uh, increase on that and see what it will look like. Still just an incredible snake. Um, and another thing I want to talk about is I had some music playing in the background on some of my videos. Uh, also some videos I posted on Facebook and the videos got muted uh, so apparently you can't even have the radio playing in the background uh, during a video so my cousin uh, produces music and he's gonna send over some good beats and stuff like that so I can add into my videos which I think should be um, pretty cool uh, so stay tuned for that uh, I think I'm going to post another video this weekend just highlighting the, the gravid females. Uh, now we have five, five gravid females. Uh, the fifth one, is, she ovulated, so we're just waiting on her post ovulation shed. So stay tuned for that. And hope you guys have a really good weekend.